Welcome to our today's class of Advanced Public Finance and Taxation. And we are going to discuss the topic of the partnership. And this is basically the taxation of the partnership. Now, in the taxation of the partnership, there are a few points that uh, we need to master so that we can be able to know how to arrive at uh, the taxable income of a partnership. Uh, a partnership is uh, generally never taxed, but it is the partners who are normally taxed on the income they receive from the partnership and any other income from other sources. The total income of a partner from the partnership comprises of the following. Uh, one, the salaries of partners received from the partnership. The salaries of the partners received from the partnership. Two, interest of capital interest on the capital held by the partners from the partnership. Interest on the capital held by the partners from the partnership. Three, bonus or commission received by the partners from the partnership. Four, the share of the profit received by a partner from the partnership. Five, we deduct any interest on the drawings on the partner's account. We deduct any interest on the drawings on the partner's account. So basically, those are the four items that will form the income uh, that is received from by a partner from the partnership. I'll summarize them as salaries. Two, we have interest on capital. Three, we have bonus or commission. And then four, we have the share of profit received by the partner from the partnership. Now, after knowing the sources of income that is received by a partner from the partnership, we need to know how to arrive at the adjusted income and taxable income of every partner. Normally, the procedure of arriving at the adjusted income and taxable income of the partners is done like we do for the sole traders. That is, we adjust the reported income by adding back the disallowable expenses and also deducting any non-business income or income which is not taxable or which is taxed otherwise. Then, once we arrive at the adjusted income from the partnership, it is that income that we allocate to the partners. It is that income that we allocate to the partners. Normally, the allocation schedule will include the items that we have mentioned earlier as number one, two, three uh, above, as we have already mentioned. Then uh, we look at the partners using the columns depending on the number of partners. If we have three partners, we shall use three columns. And a column for the total, that will be the fourth column. If we have more than, if we have five partners, then we shall have an allocation schedule with uh, as many number of columns as the number of the partners. I will illustrate the allocation schedule. I will illustrate the allocation schedule of the income that is received from the tab partnership as follows. Now, the allocation schedule will, as I have said before, be in column form, columns. The columns will depend on the number of the partners. So if on the extreme light, I just indicate where we will be showing the total, then I can also indicate uh, generally the other column. We can just use a letter like letter M for a partner. We can also use a letter just generally like a letter S for another partner. And we can also use a letter G generally for another partner. Now, these amounts, you can indicate that they will be in shillings. They will be in shillings. They will be in shillings. Then, in that allocation schedule, what we include? What shall we include? We shall include, as I have said, salaries to partners. So it will have salaries to partners. So the first item will be salary to the partners. We can just generally indicate our figures for salaries using a general format or a letter. 
just a letter X. Then the next item will be interest. Interest to partners. So you'll put interest to partners. Now this interest is obtained by using the agreed percentage multiplied by the partner's capital account balances. So it's an agreed percentage on the partner's capital balances. Then we can also have another column showing a bonus if there is. If in the partnership deal or agreement there is mention of bonus, to be paid to any of the partners or all the partners, then we shall indicate the bonus. This bonus, uh, we can also have commission. So a bonus or commission, if payable to the partner, we will indicate it at that point. So the bonus and then the, the total. Then after we get that, then we shall have uh, interest on the drawings. Interest on the drawings. So interest on drawings, is the next item, we have interest on the drawings. But this interest on the drawings is normally uh, not taxable, is normally not taxable, but deductible since we said the interest on drawings is normally not uh, taxed, so that one we shall have it into brackets. So remember, if in our adjusted income we add any interest on drawings, then we are removing this interest on drawings we are removing the interest of drawing by showing it into bracket. Then after we show that, then we shall have now the share of profit or a loss. So we shall have the share of profit stroke loss, stroke loss. So if the partnership made a profit, they will share it. They will share the profit, they will share the profit. If the partnership made a loss, that is the adjusted income. The adjusted income is not a profit, but instead it's a loss, then they will just share the loss, and I will indicate it by XX again, but now into bracket. But now into bracket. So this is in a situation whereby it's, it, it's a loss. So in that case, they will share a loss. So remember here, we are saying the partners can share a profit, the partners can also share a loss. So it is not a must that uh, always the partnership businesses will make profits. Sometimes they can make losses, and if they make losses, then they will share the losses, just the way they would have shared the profits. Then, once we have that then, we will take the total of all these figures from the partners' salaries, interest, bonus, and all that, so we shall take a figure there, a figure there, a figure there, a figure there, indicating the total. So this is the adjusted business income. So whatever we have here as our total is the adjusted business income. So this we shall call adjusted business income. Adjusted business income. So this is the income that was obtained after adjusting our profit the way I say it, that to arrive at the adjusted income of the partnership, we do it just like for any other business, like just like for the sole traders, where, as I said, we get the reported profit, the reported accounting profit from the income statement. We adjust by adding the disallowable expenses and uh, deducting the non-taxable income or the income tax otherwise. So that is the one we are getting here. So this is the income, the adjusted business income that the partners will have shared here. So of importance here is to make sure that these totals, these totals here add up to the, our adjusted uh, uh, business income, our adjusted business income. Then if these partners have income from any other sources, then we shall add it here. Then we shall add that income from other sources. Remember sometimes, the partners could be, uh, the partnership could have been engaged in other activities that are not necessarily the normal business operation. Remember the normal business operation is a trading activity, but they can engage in other activities such as renting of houses. So that would be a separate activity, 
which could be yielding the rental income. They could be uh, engaged in uh, investment in terms of shares, in terms of interest yielding investments, where they earn dividends or they can also earn interest. So, and they could also be engaged in an activity like farming. If they are engaged in an activity like farming, we also need to determine the income which is, which arises from the farming activity so that we can bring it also into the allocation schedule. So here we have another heading of saying other incomes. So we normally bring in other incomes that are received by the partners. In this case, as I have said, we can just begin by rental. A very common item of income is rental. Most of the businesses, other than engaging in the normal trading activities, may engage in renting of uh, property. So we will bring that. We will bring the share that they get from rental. And then we can also bring in a, an item like uh, uh, a private business income. They can have some private business income. A partner is engaged in a, a, in a separate private business, like could be having just separate rental property or a farming activity, which is just private. So private business income. So if a partner has some private business income, then we shall also bring it into our computation. Then any farming income we shall bring. So if there is any farming, farming income, uh, that farming income is also going to come in. We need to bring the farming income uh, into our performer. If, again, there is any investment in shares and uh, the partnership has received an income like dividends, then we shall bring it also here. So we shall bring the dividends. We shall bring the dividends. The dividends that we bring here are the non-qualifying dividends. So here, I'll use the word non-qualifying. non-qualifying dividends. So those dividends shall be brought in in our performer. Now, the meaning of the word non-qualifying dividend is these are the dividends that are taxed at source at withholding tax rates, but the withholding tax rate is not the final tax, meaning that the gross amount of dividends is added to the taxpayer's other income and taxed using the graduated scale rates. So basically these are dividends from the cooperative societies, from the cooperative societies. So not the dividends from limited companies, but basically the dividends from cooperative societies, they are the ones that we call non-qualifying dividends. Here, I repeat that the gross amount of dividend is added to the taxpayer's other income and taxed at the graduated scale rate. So we have the dividend there. So once we get all the income from the other sources, what we shall do is we again shall take a total. We shall take a total uh, of the income from the normal business operation and the income from the other sources. We get a total there, a total, a total, a total, a total. And we shall have the total a taxable income of a partner. So this one will give us the taxable income of a partner. So again, at this point, it is important to confirm that the income allocated to the partners, each of the partners, agrees with the total, agrees with the total income from all the sources, from all the sources. Now, it is important to have some notes, some important points to be taken uh, uh, into account. And the points to be taken into account is uh, are the following. So it is important to understand a few points regarding the taxation of the partnership, and uh, 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 they follow as follows. The, the computation of adjusted business of a partnership is similar to any other business except for the following. That I had already said at the beginning, that the computation will be similar to that of any other business, with the following exceptions, which are very important now to note. A, salaries to partners are not allowable. Hence, should be added back if deducted in the income statement. 
So the key thing there to understand is salaries to partners are not allowable. B, interest on capital is not allowable. Hence, should be handed back if included in the income statement. Again, important to underline there is interest on capital is not allowable in the income statement and should be added back. C, interest on drawings are not taxable and should be deducted if included in the income statement, if included in the income statement. And that's why in the pro forma, we removed the interest on drawings by putting it into brackets, by putting that into bracket. Then D, drawings of taxable goods by the partners are not allowable and hence should be handed back at costs. Should be handed back at cost, but the same is never allocated to the partners in the allocation schedule. So drawings of taxable goods. So drawings we are saying is the removal of goods from a business for private use by any of the partners. For instance, if the partners, the partners uh, have a business of a handware shop and uh, a partner just goes to the handware shop and picks a few bags of cement for own use, then we are saying that uh, that is a drawing of taxable goods. And we are saying they should be added back at cost in the income statement because they are not allowable. They should be added back at cost and not at the selling price, and not at the selling price. So those are the four important points that differentiate the computation of the adjusted business income of a partnership from the others, from the others. So um, after understanding these points of uh, how to arrive at the adjusted taxable income and the exemptions, then we will go into knowing how to compute taxable income of specific areas. Now, you will be expected to understand the following concepts of partnership. One is the conversion of a partnership into a limited company. That is in the course of the year. For instance, a partnership which has operated for seven months, maybe from January to July, and then from July to December, that partnership is converted into a limited company. That you want to understand how then we are going to account for the time when the business was being operated as a partnership and the five months when the business is operated as a limited company, operated as a limited company. Then the second concept that you will need to understand is the concept of uh, admission of a partner or partners in the course of the year. Sometimes partners join in the course of the year as the business is uh, proceeding. What you want to understand here is how much of the profit that the partnership will make at the end of the year will be allocated to the partner who is being admitted. Normally, the partner who is being admitted will be allocated income on a pro rata basis. That is, depending on the number of months, the partner is going to be in business. If it is the loss, the same. The partner will be allocated the loss based on the number of months the partner has been in the business. Also, the other concept that is important is the retirement of a partner. Sometimes, for various reasons, partners do retire from a partnership business. They do retire from a partnership business. Uh, an example would be due to poor health. A partnership can retire due to poor health, and of course, due to other reasons. So again, if a partner retires from a business during the course of the year, we would want to know how much of the profit we are going to allocate to that partner for that tax year, so that the partner can be uh, taxed on the appropriate amount. So to understand the three concepts that I've already mentioned, we shall illustrate those concepts by use of uh, past paper questions, whereby I will give the solutions to those past paper questions. So we'll read the question three of December 2012. Uh, 
The question reads, Samuel and Felom have been operating uh, Savile Enterprises, a partnership business from 1st January 2010, sharing profits and losses equally. The following was the firm's income statement for the year ending that 1st December 2011. Savile Enterprises income statement for the year ending that 1st December 2011. Sales, the figures are in thousands. 112,960, closing stock, 19,200, giving a total of 132,160. Less, opening stock, 14,200, and purchases, 48,800, giving us a total of 63,000. The gross profit is 69,160. And other incomes, rental income, 3,000, interest income, 2,400, giving a total of other incomes of 5,400. Total is of other incomes and the gross profit is 74,560. Less expenses, salaries and wages, 26,400, sorry, rent and rates, 5,600. Office expenses, 7,800. Computer maintenance, 8,460. Telephone and postage, 3,800. General insurance, 2,890. Website hosting, 2,210. Marketing and advertisement, 2,400. Legal expenses, 7,200, medical expenses, 2,400, consultancy fees, 8,400, bank charges, 1,920, loss from farming, 4,000, fee ET paid, 2,040, depreciation, 6,000, single business permit, 2,000, water and electricity, 1,600, giving total expenses of 95,120. Net loss, 20,560. Additional information. One, the business was converted from a partnership into a remittance company in the name of Savero Remittance with the effect from 1st July 2011, fully owned by Samuel, Samuel and Felom who became Directors. The ownership in shares was agreed at 55% and 45% for Samuel and Felom, respectively. Number two, the business was housed in a building owned by Samuel for which length of shillings 450,000 per month was paid. This length was included in the length and rates expense for the year. Three, Legal expenses include shillings 3,000, shillings 3.6 million paid to a law firm for defending Samuel in a case where he had been sued for breach of contract. Four, consultancy fee included 2.4 million 400,800 paid to LA and Associates for computerizing several remittance operations. Associates is owned by Felom's wife. Five. Marketing and advertising expenses represented the cost of construction of a billboard in February 2011. The billboard was to be designed every year. Six, crossing stock in the trading account was stated at the selling price, which was 20% above the cost. Number seven, salaries and wages included. Salaries to both partners for the six months to 30 June 2011, shillings 4.8 million, that is the total. Salaries paid to each director for the six months to 31st December 2011, shillings 2.4 million. Eight, capital allowances for the year were agreed at shillings 5.6 million. We are told to assume all the revenues and expenses accrued evenly throughout the year unless otherwise stated. Required. Savile Enterprises taxable profit or loss for the six months period ended 30 June 2011.
eight marks, allocation of the profit or loss in B, one above to the partners. Three, several remittance taxable profit or loss for the six months period and then 31st December 2011, four marks. So basically that is the information provided in this question, the information provided in this question. I'll go through the additional information mentioning the effect of each of the items in the additional information. One, the business was converted from a partnership into a remittent company in the name of several remittent with the effect from 1st July 2011. Now, it therefore means the business was operated as a partnership for six months. That is from January to 30th June. So up to that time, the business was a partnership. Then from 1st July to 31st December, the business was operated as a remittent company. So what we shall do in this case is to allocate the, uh, the income and the expenses prorata to the time, based on the time. That is six months and then six months. So that is the same as uh, half, half. Six months and then six months. Then the allowable expenses will be the same. Six months when it was operating as a partnership, six months when it is operating as a limited company.